Hey guys, iMac here, and welcome to episode number 21 of Gamers Digest. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about some of the upcoming changes to Star Wars The Old Republic, so I figured I'd lead off with a trailer. One of the differences between Star Wars The Old Republic um, and other online games is that we've actually kept the team that built Star Wars The Old Republic together and focused on continuing to build new content going into the future. Rise of the Rack Rules is a huge epic storyline. We've actually been working on it for a year, and it takes place in two parts. Our first part comes out right away, our second part comes out in the future. That's how epic the story is. PvP is going to be a big focus for us. You're going to see a new war zone. Uh, you're also going to see new features. Uh, one of the most important features for players that are fans of PvP is the ability to rank themselves, to see how they're doing against other players. The legacy system actually allows each one of your new characters um, to join a family tree, and all the characters within that family tree uh, gain benefits. It's going to unlock abilities and powers that you normally wouldn't have access to. We have thousands of guilds in Star Wars Old Republic right now, and we need to support them in a big way. Um, the first thing that you're going to see are guild banks. That's something that players have been asking for, and we're going to be giving it to them. We have a team devoted to allowing players to customize the interface that they use. So you'll be able to move around interface elements, you'll be able to change what your interface looks like to essentially optimize it to the kind of gameplay you like. We're also going to be listening to the community and seeing what they want to see in the game. We always are listening to the community. You are the people who decide what kind of changes we need to make to the game because this game is for you guys. And I'm back. Pretty cool stuff. Bioware actually did my work for me this week, but I still am going to talk about some of the stuff I saw in the trailer. Uh, first of all, they said they're going to do a new war zone. That's always cool. Rise of the Raccoons is going to be a multi-part uh, dungeon, so there's going to be more added on to it at a later date. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not really a big Raccoon guy. I, I mean, it's kind of like zombies. You see zombies in like, every game nowadays, and Raccoons are basically like a zombie. Uh, they, they, they basically are. You, they get infected by something they, it's a zombie i don't know it's 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 pretty lame i'm not a big fan of red cools but um yeah one thing that he talked about that is kind of i guess worded weirdly he said there's a way for pvpers to compare themselves like a rank system but that that's very vague um world of warcraft classic world of warcraft had a rank system where i'm rank 14 i'm a grand marshal that's not that's different from an arena rank system or a rated BG rank system. So I'm very curious to see what that rank system actually is. Is it a rank of who plays the most, who gets the most kills every week or is it a rank of my rated BG te team is better than your rated Warzone team? Another thing they teased us with is this new battleground. I already like the looks of this new battleground. I've always been more of an outdoor kind of BG person. Any game I play, I like to be outdoors if possible, I guess to make up for the fact that I don't go outside in real life. Um, I've always liked outdoor maps, whether it's Call of Duty, I like Jungle, I like Village. I'm not I'm not a big fan of Void Star. I like being outside. I like Warsaw and Gold, Sharathi Basin, the beautiful battlegrounds. Um, but I, I've already liked the looks of that. It looks like you got some big rock pillars to line of sight with. Ships killing each other in the sky. So it should be a pretty sweet BG. I've been so tired. I, I got really tired of um, basically only one war zone. I love Hutball, but you get Hutball like every time, especially a Sith, because uh, the Sith side on our server is very active. Uh, so we get Hutball like 80% of the time. I, I'm not I'm not even kidding. And I hate Void Star. I'm not even going to talk about Void Star, but it, it's just bad. Um, yeah, it's bad. Uh, I like um, Alderaan Civil War. Uh, Alderaan Civil War, I, I think it's my favorite because it's like a vanity thing. Like you hardly ever get it and you're like, oh my god, I got Alderaan Civil War. This never happens. I will just take it in. And it it's amazing when you get Alderaan Civil War. So I'm a big fan of, uh, of outdoor stuff for sure. Looking forward to a new BG. Is this BG going to be faction versus faction or are you going to be able to fight... Uh, are you going to be able to fight your own faction? That's a pretty important question to ask because if you're on a server where your PvP faction is a lot more active than the other faction, it could turn into another Alderaan Civil War where you hardly ever get it. 
But Bioware has said that they're going to try to adjust the way you queue for War Zones, kind of like how in WoW you can queue for Eye of the Storm specifically if you want to. So that's that's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of that. Hopefully they do that. Is that doable on a non-cross-realm BG system? That's the only thing that kind of throws a red flag for me. I know on PvP servers like the Crucible Pits, it would definitely be doable. I have a feeling that, that would, something could easily happen. Another thing that I really like is the Legacy system. I think the Legacy system is a great idea. I'm not really a guy that plays alts, but the fact that I can get Legacy experience for being a nerd on my main and getting achievements and getting all the Datacrons, getting all the lore objects and things like that, which actually improves my character, is pretty cool. And plus, it also is nice to kind of have that reassurance that if I do roll an alt, all of the things I did on my main actually affect my next character. And I have a feeling they're going to they're gonna implement BOA gear or an equivalent to BOA gear with the legacy system. They're going to have mounts, all that kind of stuff. The only thing that concerns me about the legacy system is that it'll cap out way too soon. And what I mean by that is within four months, I'm going to be max legacy level and there's going to be nothing else for me to do. That would suck. They need to make the max legacy level so high that it is almost unachievable. Hell, they could even make it unachievable. It needs to be something that has no end. So someone that's been playing this game for, let's just say, two years, it's going to show they've been playing this game for two years. I thought that World of Warcraft had a great idea with the guild leveling system. You get your guild to 25, you get all this, all this awesome stuff. Uh, as your guild levels up, you get more stuff. But the problem was, is that once you got to 25, there was nothing to do. Getting to 25 was awesome. But Blizzard decided to not make the guild levels any higher. I'm sure they will. They'll make them higher in Mists of Pandaria, maybe. But I, they should have made it higher. It should have. There should have been more things to achieve than just level 25. Because people were getting level 25 within a few months easily. Even the casual guilds were getting level 25 within a few months. So that's the only gripe I have. Bioware, make the legacy system a big system, lots of rewards. And even if you don't have rewards available yet, like say you've only made rewards available to level 30, let the levels go higher. Like just just some sort of recognition that you've done a lot of things or achieved a lot of things. Don't cap it out. That's basically what I'm saying. Don't cap out like level 50 and that's it. Make it go to 60. There may not be any rewards for getting to 60, but just let it go all the way up to 60. Why not? Now on to the next topic, Ilum. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember after patch 1.1 came out and they buffed the Valor and Ilum, there were these huge world PvP battles or world PvP camp fests where players were getting upwards of 350,000 Valor in one day. Uh, Bioware officially made a statement about that. But the question is, will they deliver on this statement? Will, are, are they just saying this to say this, or are they actually going to act on it? This is where Bioware shows if they're the real deal or not, in my opinion. Um, are they going to roll back these people that did this? They said right here, they're not going to do a mass rollback and roll back everyone, which I figure they would do. I figure they're just going to be like, hey guys, sorry, we're going to roll you back. There was a big issue. Here's some free game time or something like that. But they decided not to do that, which is cool. I don't mind that they didn't do that. And I really don't mind if they do that, if they actually deliver on the statement and they say they're actually looking at specific accounts. If they look at specific accounts and roll them back, that is going to blow people's minds. That's going to blow my mind because I'll be ridiculously surprised if it actually happens. And the reason people's minds are going to be blown is because they're so used to getting away with everything with Blizzard. Blizzard just stopped giving a shit towards the end of Wrath. I know people that back in BC that got banned for buying gold. People got banned all the time. These huge ban waves for people buying gold, cheating in arenas, and that used to happen. And then towards the end of Wrath, they just stopped giving a shit. Cataclysm, they really stopped giving a shit. And people just got used to getting away with it. People got used to getting piloted. People playing their accounts. People got used to buying gold. People got used to cheating and not getting in trouble for it. So if Bioware actually puts their foot down and, and bans, ban, not ban, I don't think that these people deserve a ban. They didn't, let, let me let me just get this off my chest. These people that did this Valor, this huge exploit of Valor, I don't think they should be banned. Not at all. I don't think they should even get suspended. I just think that the Valor that they got in that day should be taken away. That's all, no, nothing else other than that. Just that. They didn't do anything against the rules, but they did exploit a bug in like to an extent of like, oh my god. 
So I don't think they should be banned. I, I That kind of slipped. I don't think they should be banned. Just take their Valor away, and that will be enough of a punishment. Take their, yeah, just take their Valor away. You don't have to take away the Battlemaster gear they might have gotten, uh, because no one's got full Battlemaster by now. But if you take their rank away, then that's almost more of a punishment if you don't take the gear away, because you're going to see a guy in Battlemaster gear and inspect him, and he won't be Valor rank 60. And you'll know that he was the guy that did what he did. So I think it would be more of a punishment to not take the gear away. Actually, no, probably not, but I do think it'd be funny to see that. Next up, we have server group forums. Now, this is something that I I don't even fucking understand at all. Okay, so people were saying, hey, we need server forums. Hey, we need server forums. Bioware, please make server forums. And this is something that... Uh, making forums is not hard. Striphium knows how to make fucking forums. I don't know why they can't make every server... Have a forum. Uh, if you go look at these group forums right now, first of all, you go, you go to your, you go to the forum. You choose from PVE realms, PVP realms, RP realms, RP PVP realms. That's a okay, no problem with that. But then once you click that, it groups the servers by alphabetical order. So each thread there's an, a realms A through C. So every single realm has its own for. I, I can't even explain how retarded it is. Basically, instead of each realm having its own forum, four to five realms, even six realms, have their own forum. I don't know why each realm can't have its own forum. Like, the, just the sheer fact that I can't explain this to you because it doesn't make any sense, it, it just shows how retarded it is. I don't know why they we can't just have our own forum for our own server. Fuck. I don't know. What the fuck, Bioware? And for the last topic I'm going to be talking about today, it's good news. Bioware has finally fixed the ability delay. They haven't completely fixed it. Uh, they're never going to completely fix it. I'm sure they're going to always be trying to optimize it, make it quicker, make it not lag as much. But they have made a big fix on the live realms today. So if you were having ability delay and you haven't logged on today, try doing some PvP today. You probably will see a big improvement. I've noticed that some of the people that are playing on lower-end computers are saying that it's a completely different game for them. Uh, people that were playing on not not as good computers were having a lot of an ability delay that was fixed in this patch. So if you haven't tried out the game today, try it out. I noticed the difference. There are still some abilities that have very strange things about them, uh, particularly for the assassins. The assassinate ability, our execute type ability. Uh, where we spin the lightsaber over top of our head, it's still got some weird screwy shit with it that still needs to be fixed. Like, if I do execute, and then I interrupt someone while my execute uh, animation is going off, it will cancel the assassinate. It will just completely uh, cancel the ability, and it just nothing will happen. So, there, there's a lot of screwy shit with that, and that's just things that are going to eventually get worked out over the uh, these next few months. Uh, they can't fix everything right now, so it's just going to take some time. WoW had screwy shit like this when it came out. Every game does. But it's a uh, it's a work in progress, and I'm glad that they fixed it the way they did. It, they really did a good job with this patch. It really improved a lot of people, so uh, definitely something that needed to happen right away. They did a good job. They're still working on it, which is always good. And I'm glad that they actually addressed the problem, because this is... A, I was kind of worried when when there was this much PvP delay. Even in, like even in the beta, I know there was a lot of PvP delay, and they never really mentioned it. So it kind of worried me. Like, oh, are they not gonna like fix this? Is this something that can't be fixed? Is this like engine side, like something that they couldn't fix without having to redo the entire game? But luckily, they were able to, and they put the effort in. So good on you, Bioware, for fixing something like this. It actually shows that you do give a shit about PvP in this game. And that'll wrap up this episode of Gamer's Digest. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. This week I'm giving away any game of your choosing on EA Origin or Steam. This includes Star Wars The Old Republic or 30 Days of Star Wars The Old Republic Game Time. Or any game of your choosing on Steam. All you have to do to have a chance to win is thumbs up, favorite, and comment on this video. And be sure to be subscribed to Gamer's Digest by clicking the blue Gamer's Digest text up at the top and clicking subscribe. I'll be choosing a winner from the comments below right before the next episode of Gamers Digest comes out, so be sure to check your PM box. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.